All right. 17. I'm not sure why they say 17. <laughs> Last night, I had a dream about the past. I'm sure it's because of the letter I found yesterday. I feel like I should have given him the letter that day after all. This lingering feeling now compels me to write. I will be trying to describe what happened when I was a young girl, but I'm not so sure I can do it. It's because I'd given up on conveying anything beyond words in the first place that I couldn't hand him the one I'd penned. I guess I'm a bit hesitant because I might belittle my experiences of that day by writing them down. Still, I probably ought to have given it to him. For the first time in ages in over 10 years, I read over the letter that I wasn't brave enough to part with, and my young self made me smile. I was able to feel generous. You should have given it. I wanted to go back and tell the me of that day. Too bad. I couldn't have been more forgiving about my own immaturity and imperfection. And this twilight is five centimeters per second. That's because of fact you're oh, too nice, Earth. <clears throat> okay, so I assume this is when they were at the age of 17. And hey, uh, Azure, by the way, uh, this letter is talking about it happened in a movie when they were elementary school kids. Wait. Did she- wait, did she write a letter too? I thought only the guy wrote the letter. Oh no, it did mention that she also had a letter. Yeah, okay. Get out of your editor. <laughs> sure, Mofu. You do, I'll do you. Okay, so... In the movie, uh, there was a scene where they like last meet up in IRL. They took like the Tokyo train, or like not the Tokyo train, the train to meet each other in the movie. And that was the last time they met IRL basically as, as kids. Where they kind of decide to like, you know, they can't really pursue a relationship with each other anymore. And the main character had a letter to give the girl. But lost it during the walk there because of the because of a snowstorm, and then afterwards they still try to contact each other through mail or through letters, but eventually the letters became less and less and less, and she decided not to give a letter or given him the letter anymore. And I think this letter was like a confession letter. Uh, and. What else? What else? There's one more thing. I'm forgetting. Uh... Oh, no, no. Never mind. There's something I'm forgetting. I was just going to say, like, it's kind of like, you know, when you, like, have online friends, uh, and just, like, maybe when you, like, lose interest in them, or they lose interest in you, or it's a mutual thing, you start sending messages less and less every day until, like, until it becomes like every other day, every other week, or every week, every other week, and they just stop messaging each other and you're, uh, from then onward. That's kind of like that, but, but letters. <laughs> Alright, I'll continue reading. In that sense, what I am about to write is a terribly related letter. I mowed over this, I'll start with my school transfers. I can get self-conscious over trivial matters, and having trouble telling people where I'm from is one of them. In a diverse city like Tokyo, establishing where you're from is an important way to break the ice. However, I always get a bit flustered when, sh when the topic comes up. According to my parents, I was born in Itsunomiya. Utsunomiya. But I don't remember living there. I don't think of it as my hometown, since my mother's side of the family is from Utsunomiya. It sometimes comes up in conversation at home. Even so, I never really feel one way or the other about it. My family and I moved to Akira before I started elementary school. Then we went to Shizu Shizuoka Prefecture 
followed by Ishikawa Prefecture. We moved around because my father, who worked at a regional electronics manufacturer based in Tochigi Prefecture, had to transfer to branch offices in various areas for his job. For that reason, even to this day, I still don't feel like there is one set place where I belong. When you, rep when you repeatedly move and change schools as a child, that tick tends to take root in the very base of your consciousness. Wherever I went, I never made myself comfortable. To me, every new place felt nothing but temporary and impermanent. This was my general attitude ever since my earliest years and throughout my adoles adolescence. It was the winter of third grade in Ishikawa Prefecture. My mother told me that I would be changing schools the following year for the millionth time. I was a little glad to escape from Ishikawa, but terrified of starting all over again. Next will be Tokyo. My mother made it sound like we had hit the jackpot. Looking back on it now, we probably had hit the jackpot in terms of my father's career, yet I felt nothing by growing omin ominousness? <laughs> ominousness? ominousness from the creaky sound of the name Tokyo. At that point in my life, I had never felt emotionally attached to a school, a town, or even a person, and I had a vague sense that things were doomed to be that way forever. I once read an essay by someone who had repeatedly changed schools when he was young, just like I had. I don't know. Where is reading today? The writer claimed to clearly remember and feel connected to every single town he had lived in. But I had no leeway to do that at all. If I let my eyes roam around, I would make eye contact with someone. Whenever I made eye contact, words come hurling at me. Those words were almost never kind. I would always keep my head hung low and try my best to avoid confronting anything. I felt scared every time I had to change schools. New place and strangers did not make me happy. No matter how many times I transferred, I could never fit in at a new school. I was genuinely terrified of everything, of the fact that I was the only one who spoke with a very different intonation, the unique viscosity of bonds in each lo locale, of the unfamiliar buildings and people, of the unfairness of everyone else in class knowing one another when I did not know any of them. Whenever I was thrown into a new place against my will, a shrinking sort of feeling spread over my skin. My classmates' slightest gestures and off-handed words only put pressure on me. While I wish I could have hid my fears and pretended I was fine, I wasn't strong enough to do something that difficult. Oh, from the get-go in the movie, definitely did not have any of this like monologue narration kind of stuff. It was more like a show and tell kind of thing, obviously. This one is just... When I watched the movie, I didn't really think much about the, the female character. As you know, it wasn't by in her perspective, and we didn't see her that much. She felt very unrelatable. Now, on the other hand, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks all around. Hey, Kaito. A desperate patient was the sole theme of my nine-year-old life. My environment intensified my fears, and my fears only made my classmates treat me worse. I thought that this vicious cycle might follow me until death, which is why I never felt like I belonged anywhere. I must have been wearing my usual gloomy stare when my father's old car pulled up to our new apartment in Sangubashi, Sangubashi Tokyo. I hadn't even glanced at the passing scenery on the way. I couldn't care less what the new cityscape looked like. I would just end up with the same bitter taste in my mouth. It was about to start all over again. The panic and pain inside me would only bleed one shade deeper 
as though an additional layer of paint were being applied. Hey, Lalaji. Where is reading? <laughs> My temple leaning against the car window. I wished a wall, a transparent and strong, like the window glass, would always protect me. So the slam of the opening car door sounded really eerie. When I got out of the car, the parking lot's asphalt felt beneath my shoes and the penetrating, chilly air made me want to cry. Very soon, in just one week, a new academic year was going to begin and I would have to go alone to a totally unfamiliar place. When I imagined it, the pit of my stomach tightened and released a toxic fear that spread through my body to my fingertips. Back in those days, I think I was in the habit of vaguely contemplating death. Deep down, I knew I couldn't live like that forever. But I didn't especially want to die. I wasn't brave enough to kill myself, of course. I imagined that. If the bitter feeling persisted, I ought to grow weak, crumble little by little, and see my shadow fade. And then I would vanish instantly, like a snowflake. The prospect didn't bother me at all. What a relief it would be if my breathing and heart just stopped and my consciousness disappeared along with the pain. I would think with my still immature mind. That was when and where I met Takaki Tono. Takaki Tono is the main character, the main male lead in the movie. Oh, are you doing fine? We're just chilling. Reading. So 16, this is 15 now. The height of the lectern always made me feel dizzy. Even though it was only four inches off the floor, the mere sight of it made my heart sink and gave me the shakes. A swarm of eyes was watching me. Each individual face swayed and shifted restlessly. Hey Namu, you're kind of scary Namu. You scared me the heck, you scared the heck out of me yesterday Namu. But hey Namu. I couldn't figure out what lay behind their faces and deep in their eyes. I heard a giggle come from somewhere and reflexively hunched my shoulders. Then I lifted my interlaced fingers up to my chest. Startled by the sudden screech of chalk against the blackboard, I turned around. Is my voice okay by the way? I'm using a different kind of voice while reading this. Like a more sad voice. <laughs> Is it working? I can't go back to the voice that I used for weathering with you. They were laughing, laughing openly now, and I felt more and more like I wanted to get out of there. After the teacher finished writing Akadi Shinohara on the blackboard, she placed her hands on my shoulders and turned me back towards my classmates. My shoulders only stiffened under her hands. This is Akari Shinohara. She'll be studying with us from now on. Let's welcome her to our new class. Or to our class. I know whispering sometimes that's fine for me. Hmm. Alright, let me change it up a bit. <laughs> but you don't know no food. Alright, let's see. Oh. After the teacher spoke, she gave me the cue to say it was a pleasure to meet them. I bowed while I spoke and my voice cracked. The air in the classroom seemed to buzz with criticism. What a weird name, someone said. The entire classroom practically ruptured with laughter. People always made fun of my, fun of my name when I transferred to a new school, so I had to end up thinking that it was actually strange. No scare, no scare. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I just realized that the, the, the text or the chat's kind of blocking some of it, actually. Oh, bad RNG. <laughs> the teacher scolded the students, but only half-heartedly, 
even adults overlook problems in order to keep the peace. Even though I was too young to wrap my head around many things at the time, I was perfectly aware that my teachers weren't my friends. She gestured me to my seat. I hadn't noticed how stiff my knees had become until I got off the platform, and they almost gave out. My legs trembled as I staggered between the desk to my seat. I wondered why my body wouldn't just move how I wanted it to. The girls and boys on each side of me lowered their heads and their, si their eyes and turned in their seats to watch me pass by. The brush of their gaze against my trembling hands and swaying skirt made my body so tense that all the pores on my body seemed to be sealing shut. My vision was closing in and I lost focus. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Namu, take care. Everything looked like it was wavering. Why does my feet feel so far away? I thought. I hung my head lower and lower, and then I whispered. A whispered voice entered my ears. You are going to be okay. Oh, if I'm gonna be honest, I think I like my whispering voice better. I feel like it fits this book better. <laughs> I'm not sure. Or at least this part. <laughs> Alright, let me let me try a bit more. Over? I'll I'll try something else. Or I'll try this a bit more. Surprise, I reflexively straightened my back. Up until that moment, I hadn't noticed how lousy my posture has been. My distorted vision instantly cleared up. I wanted to stop and glance around to find the source of the voice. Okay, you know what? Yeah, it doesn't fit at all. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna go with my whisper voice. But there was no way I could. I made my way to my seat in the backmost row. Many students turned back to look at me. I would have normally stared nervously at the grains of my desk, but my eyes swam over my classmates' faces. Who? Who whispered that to me? The words had been so quiet that I began to doubt I had actually heard them. And in fact, I was the only one who was reacting to the whisper. No one else had noticed the voice. Huh. But it was a boy's. Or at least that's what I thought. Even after the teacher tapped on the lectern to get our attention, I simply kept gazing at the leveled rows of black hair. After first period, my classmates stared at me for a good while, then slowly began to crowd around me. A big group of them circled me and released their rapid-fire questions. Where are you from? Why did you transfer here? When is your birthday? I was so preoccupied trying to find the owner of the voice in the sea of faces that I couldn't give a decent answer to most of their questions. You are going to be okay. The remark was still echoing in my head. The words intrigued me. What exactly did they mean? They echoed in my head until they became a string of indecipherable bleh sounds. My mind went fuzzy. It was as if I were under a spell. To be honest, they were the words I had always wanted to hear. I know now that I vaguely wish for them every time I went somewhere new. The perfect words that my nine-year-old self thought sought without knowing what they might be. Wait, what was the first page? The first page was page 9. Oh, we almost read 10 pages. I almost went on your stream, though. <laughs> Someone had understood my anxieties and sympathized with me. The idea of having a secret friend enchanted me. The one whispered remark had given me a supportive push and helped me lift my face. For some reason, the transfer felt much less scary than usual. 
a girl who looked strong-minded, most likely a leader of the bunch. Kindly misread why I was glancing over their faces with my eyes wide open, unable to speak properly. Assuming that the group had startled me, she told me to give me some space and stop asking their non-stop questions. I was shocked. My halting speech was just the usual, but she had taken it in such a positive way. It wasn't long before I figured out why. Ah, everything is so different if I just raise my head. That was the first day at a new school I had ever enjoyed. I found the voice's owner later that day. I was spending some of the breaks between classes glancing around and my eyes suddenly came to a stop. I knew I had found him. While a nice group of girls told me about our other classmates' classrooms, I stole glances at him. He was chatting with his friends as if it were just another ordinary day. The boys around him acted the way students typically do when there's a new transfer, with evident excitement. They snatched glimpses of me, tried to eavesdrop on my conversation, and seemed to be critiquing me. Eventually, students react to a new transfer in one of two ways. They either show great interest or reveal a more perverse curiosity by feigning total indifference. Yet that boy seemed to have a different reaction altogether. He stood there looking neither interested nor disinterested. Sort of neutral or absent-minded. At that time, I think I viewed him in a totally different being, unlike any other person. His oddness was clear to me. Well, making it hard to be a relationship hater? Well, I don't know about you, Sofu, but as I told you in the movie, these two kids, the girl and the guy, or the boy, they never make it. They never made it work. This relationship is not gonna work. <laughs> they don't have, they're not part of each other's future. Happy ending. Who knows, maybe. At first sight, he fit in naturally with his surroundings. There was no mistaking, however, that he stood at a remove. It was as if a wall as thin as a single sheet of paper separated him from his surroundings. It was as if he existed in another dimension by that thin layer, unbeknownst to anyone. I was very interested in this boy, or rather only he interested me. I wanted to find a way to stand before him and get a better look at his face. I wanted to ask him his name. But a transfer student couldn't do that. Couldn't express her interest in just one of them. Even quietly asking someone was an option. Transfers were expected to make friends with the entire class. To swallow it whole. I wonder if that's the case, if that's true. I don't see why not if you fit in one click or niche in the classroom. I don't know why you would be expected to make friends with the entire class. That day, after school, a few girls walking home in the same direction invited me to join them. It was incredibly rare for my first day to end with such a calm and friendly way. My heart raced with joy. Walking with the group of girls who didn't seem to, ha seem to hate me, I thought about the boy the entire time. I wondered how I might learn his name. As we proceeded along the wall around the school, we came across a cherry tree that stood just within its borders. Wind-swept cherry blossoms gently rained from its branches, which were beginning to turn green. It was, unusual, it was usually at the start of spring sem semester that I transferred, but I think that was the first time the trees and flowers really caught my attention. Facts is a fact, I'm not sure. I had several transfer students in like my like immersion Chinese class, but like they seem I don't know. Like they're just here and there. <laughs> but in elementary school I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Alright. But uh yeah, when you find someone you like.
You always find yourself looking at them, right? <laughs> Taking glances at them, Haro, in the classroom. You always heard those down bad hearts, something in middle school, high school. Yeah, I'm not sure most of but I guess there's also like, Japan also has different culture. Like where if you kinda you can't get along with just one person in the entire class, you might get made fun of. You like mostly get out of your eggy. Five centimeters per second, I said to myself. My father, who had a childish side, sometimes came home from the bookstore with a science magazine for elementary school kids that he used to subscribe to as a young boy. In one of the issues, I had eyed a piece of trivia in the margins that tickled my fancy. Chair blossoms fall at a speed of five centimeters per second. There's a tail drop. So for the days is a ton of time? Oi. You stop that, so full. In one of the issues... Oh, shoot. Hey, it's a part of my hand or finger that kind of hurts. Is that like a blister? Hmm. Not sure why. Are you reading? Yeah, we're reading this time, Sarah. <laughs> we're reading uh, five centimeters per second. Makoto Shinkai. For every notch of a clock's fastest hand, a cherry blossom falls two inches closer to the ground. And what would be my speed in getting close to him? Wait, what the heck? Wait, this is so cute. What in the heck? This is the only one person who knows me. I don't think I really got along with too many people. At school that like most of my friends like four of my five friends I would call close are all people I met online online really I mean but I met two of them or half of them are all well because they live very close but yeah one one is a classmate all right uh what is so what is stupid cute what the heck I love when people read it makes me sleepy. Is that so? Uh, reading, the act of reading makes me sleepy. Not out loud though, just reading quietly makes me sleepy. In a good way. Uh, okay, so... If y'all didn't read that, I don't read this part again, basically. Cherry blossoms fall at a speed of 5 centimeters per second, right? And what would be my speed in getting closer to him? In getting close to him? The, the boy he, she likes or is interested in? That is so cute. <laughs> What the heck? Oh, is that so, Sarah? I love reading books. Or mainly like novels and manga. I mean, I like reading book, normal books too. But I just like reading like novels more. Oh, is that so, Sarah? I see. Hey, QQ. Yep, my hands. After a brief time, I learned that his name was Takaki Tono. My teacher had given me a list of my classmates' names, saying it would be better for me to memorize them sooner rather than later. I asked a girl who liked to go out of her way to help people to match each name to a face. Remembering everyone's names was just a pretense though. My real aim was to learn his. What the heck? This girl is so shrewd. Yo, that's... <laughs> that's like me going to every volunteering event in, in like my middle school or in my high school, just so that in one of those one-year events, I could have a chance to uh, to volunteer with, with the person I had a crush on. <laughs> what the heck? But this is an elementary school. No battle scars this time. <laughs> True. I don't think I'm injured. Or my fingers. Hands. And at that point, I was honest to a fault. I never thought I could act contrary to how I felt. That I, that I could was a brand new discovery for me. Shoot. Yeah, shoot. Uh, that's how I pronounce it, right? S H R E W D. So sly, basically. <laughs> hey, let's go, QQ. I knew his name, but that was it. I wanted to get close to him, but I couldn't imagine talking to him. 
relatable. I didn't know how to approach him, and if I did so out of the blue, I would stand out and summon a flood of judgmental glares, and then something terrible would happen. My head overflowed with all the ways it could go wrong. Okay, this bothers me a lot because, what is it? Because <laughs> if a, in middle school, high school, mainly middle school. Oh, is that so sorry? Yeah. I may be pronouncing it wrong. If a boy and a girl like talks, like in my middle school, like talks a lot and gets along very well, you just get teased as being like lovers or a couple. So it's really, it's really hard to like converse with someone of the opposite gender, like just one on one, and not be like, or in public without being seen anything other than as a potential couple or shippers as if like the the t uh the pretense of wanting to be friends with someone of the opposite gender not because of their the, being the opposite gender of course just because you like them as a friend but because you are the opposite gender it's not possible or that pretense isn't possible that's kind of tough <laughs> That's rough. But it is how it is. <laughs> yep, book indeed. Hey, Trip. To begin with, I had nothing to talk about. What's more, I was afraid of boys. A certain... Uh, a certain image of them was etched into my mind. Rowdy, loud, given to awful words and deeds. The villains for my books act extremely nice at first. I might have made such an association. So I avoided looking at him, but also always kept him in the corner of my eye. I've been doing once, and middle school so full with your hands. <laughs> That's so. It was after a month or two that we spoke for the first time. Classes, cleanups, and homeroom had wrapped up. I went to the second floor library at the end of the hallway. The school library supposedly had a policy against educational manga, so all of the books only contained words. Hardly any children wants to read books without pictures. <laughs> True, that wasn't always so. I have heard, but it was already the case in my time. Which is why I had the books all to myself. There were student library assistants, but since they were rarely at the checkout counter when they were supposed to be on duty, I would always stamp my own library card and take out the books by myself. No, Sarah, don't have to sub. <laughs> I just, it's just a, streaming is just a hobby for me. That's really nice. Subbing, donating is not going to do anything, or subbing is not going to get me anything. Instead, it's going <clears throat> it's going to con contribute to my goal to quit streaming. <laughs> my goal of a million dollars or a gajillion dollars. <laughs> Only do if you want to. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Whether people... Are people continue coming here or not? Uh, when I entered a silent, empty library, I naturally hushed my breath and tried to mute my footsteps. Ready to return the book I had borrowed, I took the card out from the stock that still lay out, that still lay out on the front desk, stamped, returned, next to my name, and headed to the shelves to put the book back where it belonged. When I passed through the rows of bookcases and was just about to reach the last one, my body completely froze and sought in my head. The cocky Tono was there. Facing the spines that lined the shelves, he was focusing on a spot just above him. But I suspected he wasn't actually looking at the spines. He seemed to be looking through the bookshelf. If the books... If the books and shelves had been made of glass, his gaze would have been vaguely focused on something on the other side. Oh, is that so? God dang it, Mofu. Support Fofi to quit stream. I'm smacking you, Mofu. Oh no. What the heck, Mofu? Alright, thanks for the gifted song, Mofu. Thanks for the money. Stinky. Oh 
Oh, I love it here. <laughs> oh, you are too kind. I just read. <laughs> but yeah, everyone... You stinker, you stinker. Hey, I showered. Well, you haven't showered yet, right, Mofu? Get wrecked. <laughs> okay, besides Mofu... No, I'm kidding. Everyone's great here. Everyone's... Everyone here is very chill. Or very... Very chill. <laughs> I like it here, too. And that's why I stream. <laughs> Alright. Uh, what else, what else? Where are we? All the spines lining the bookcase which faced the southern windows had faded to a lovely yellow from the sun. I love the writing in this, by the way. Uh, I think, to me, weathering with you was more literal, like, more description of, like, what's happening and, or what is happening and what they want to do or whatever. But that makes sense, since, you know, concern the setting and how this one's like about a little kid in their life narration and like narrating their life almost this has a lot of inner monologue about what they're thinking and what then just like a lot more ref reflective thoughts <laughs> and i really this is really therapeutic i'm the hasty teacher get out of here wolf fool I'm kidding. Are you kidding now? Give me all your money, Mofo. Oh, this thing's all cheap. Hey, thanks for alert, Miki. Oh, and Miki, I'm I'm your I'm a big fan. Big fan, Miki. Thanks for dropping by. No, so Miki, no. Blip, blip, blip. My throat. <laughs> all right. Have a good, have a good alert, Miki. Where were we? The low, faint light shone in through the windows and onto Takaki's back. The downy hairs on the nape of his neck shone gold in the light, and his shadows had spilled across the spines of the books. I was as still as a figure cut in, a tr in stone, gazing at this picturesque view. When I snapped out of my trance and tried to make a run for it, he noticed me and turned around. Um, a rasping voice caught me from behind and my body went stiff. I couldn't move. I could hear the sound of my own heartbeat. My body was calling for an emergency shutdown. I wasn't sure whether I was scared or hopeful. Kari Shinohara? Yo, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure y'all felt this way or have you ever... I don't know, when I first, I was, I don't know if I fell in love or was just super infatuated, but like the feeling of your like, your head getting super, or your, your cheeks getting super red and like, blushing really like, like just zero to a hundred, like in that one second, you start blushing and growing really hot. Like their temperature, like the temperature of your head just like increases so much. That feeling, when you just like see some, you see your crush. I, I felt that like once or twice in my life and it just and it felt so it felt so weird <laughs> a very weird feeling a very memorable feeling and y'all just talking about toes in my chat <laughs> Sarah don't look at chat Sarah don't look at chat it's down bad here you haven't felt that actually well I mean I uh that's kind of I don't know. I haven't felt. I mean, I was like in middle school, and I mean, nothing, nothing happened after that. I won't. We we're just. I wouldn't even call us friends. We we're just acquaintances. Yeah, never felt icy. Yeah, yeah, like, like your heart beating super fast, and you can feel your, uh, your face turning super red and like really hot. I remember that. I just looked away. I don't know, like, like I, I, like the idea of them seeing my face turn super red in front of them felt so embarrassing. So I had to look away and look so weird while talking to, or talking to them after. <laughs> oh gosh, man. Okay, this book is just reminding me of my middle school non-existent love life. 
Nervous and giddy? Maybe nervous. I'm not sure about giddy for me. He's always been through the trenches. I think it's so cool. Yeah, Sarah, I'm so sorry. Okay, even though I'm I'm 100% pure, wholesome, and innocent or whatever, Sarah, my chat is super down bad. They talk about toes, they want my toes, I'm scared of them. Sarah just... They just ignore them, they're, they're bad influences. Let's continue reading. Oh. Hearing him call my name, I became even more flustered and tried again to flee. But my legs wouldn't budge. I shrank behind the book I held in my hands as if to shield myself. Are you returning that? He asked. Huh? Can I take it out next? He said gently, easily. And when I saw him pointing at the book in my hands, I felt totally helpless. His unassuming, absent eyes squinted in the light, in the light of the setting sun, with an unlocking, echoing clink. The first tear of my defenses came down inside me. <laughs> let's go. Let's go to a speed dating night to get you some. <laughs> uh, I because I read so much shoujo. Or so much manga, or romantic no young adult romantic novels, and just watching them as a kid or as a teenager. I am such a hopeless romantic. I cannot imagine myself using like dating apps or like going to a going to events particularly targeted for like you know speed dating or like dating in particular. I can't imagine that because that's just not like the hope for wishful scenario. That I would find, you know, that I would want. Which is very selfish of me. People who do, do those are, you know, they're, they have a purpose. They want to. They want love. I don't particularly care. Which is why if I do encounter, you know, love, you know, it'll just happen. And if it doesn't happen, I don't care either because I don't really care much about love. Uh, so, I had a chance to, but didn't want to risk my relationship. <laughs> oh, okay, I see that. I love my son to her desk knowing some told- <laughs> What the heck? No, Sarah, stop! Both of them showed us a price you want to share. Oh my god. Get yeah, wrecked, mofo. Oh my god, after just for fun? I'm oh, sorry, it's not my home, so so much for love. <laughs> I see, Sarah. And, yeah, well, gee. Yeah, it's for fun, but... I don't really... You see, I never experienced love. Or I never experienced like being in a relationship, or like love in general. So I can't... So doing it for fun is not something that I can imagine, because I never experienced it. And I don't... I don't, can't imagine myself doing it for fun, because... I mean, if I want to do something for fun, if I want to entertain myself, I don't have to do it through love. I'll just do it through video games. <laughs> Oh gee, that is that sounds very romantic. What the heck? That's a very cute first meeting. Anyways, y'all, we sleep sleeping outside crying. <laughs> okay. At first, I think I only ever responded to him by quickly shaking my head or shrinking back into silence, but I also just transferred here last year. The moment he revealed that to me. My heart practically leapt out of my chest. He had re repeatedly changed schools like me. First he was in Nagano, then Mie, the old mission, Mie. And finally he had come to Tokyo via Shizuoka. I had also lived in Shizuoka. He spoke in a leisurely and adult-like manner, and his voice was reserved. He always stopped to think before he spoke. He never acted out and made me recall or said dirty things like the other boys. <laughs> I felt comfortable enough to listen to what he had to say. Yo, did, did boys in elementary school usually say dirty things, by the way? <laughs> they we're just dumb, we we're just big dumb dumbs. No long choice, I think. I see. <laughs> right story, I forgot. Ooh, probably the true story for true. Yeah, that's okay, Mofo, right? I don't know. Oh, 
Oh wait, I overslept the, I overslept the movie. Uh, it's Kaiser, that's tomorrow. That's in 24 hours, Kaiser. Or oh, it's not in 24 hours, it's in, uh, it's in 23 hours. <laughs> 22.5 hours. I was like, dang, I'm trying to fix your sleep schedule for it, like when you left Massey stream. <laughs> But yeah, so I set, uh, you can set an alarm next time unless alarms don't work. Oh yeah, uh, so Mofu here, Mofu Soda, Sarah, the mod, Mofu Soda, uh, they're a uh, uh, they're a streamer too, and every week they have uh, or I don't know about every week, just because we just started last week, but I think starting every week now we're gonna watch an anime movie or just any movie to be honest that is recommended and that we like we want to watch. So we'll be watching an anime movie tomorrow. At around this time, but like an hour earlier, like an hour prior to like right now, tomorrow in 23 hours, uh, we'll be watching a movie in their Discord, in Mofu's Discord. And which is why I'll be starting stream late tomorrow, because we'll be watching that movie. Uh, which is called, uh, what was the movie called? Soda, Soda Pop, Soda, Soda Pops Up Like Bubble Pop? <laughs> something like that? Bubbles Pop Up Like Soda Pop, I don't know, something like that. Words bubble up like soda pop, I see. Yeah, that's a movie. It looks really cute. Also, we're fast. I'm gonna join this court. Mm -mm -mm. I, unfortunately, it's a redeem. But if Mofu is super kind enough, then they'll give the redeem if they trust you. <laughs> or, or they'll give you the Discord server if they trust you. Oh, wait, or. But they are streaming tonight, though, so you can also camp their stream. Mofu dying? Wait, what do you mean I'm dying? <laughs> I'll be spinning bars? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, you already saw the movie. I see. It's nice, I see. Wait, did I say I'm dying? Huh? Oh, no. I'm not dying, though. <laughs> oh, Mo, you're too nice. Yeah, it's in Mofu's Discord. Yeah, it's it'll be tomorrow at uh basically when I start a stream today. <laughs> in twenty two point five hours. Something like that is when we'll be there watching the movie. And after the movie I'll stream a bit. But yeah. Not sure what I want to do tomorrow actually. Honestly, I really feel like playing Tekken again. Or because I don't know, Tekken is so fun now. I don't play Tekken tomorrow, and you know what's gonna happen the day after? I'm gonna play Pokemon. I swear, I'm either gonna play Pokemon. I'm gonna play Pokemon and Genshin to the day after. We're going back to Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> nice me. I don't want like no bruh, the sass. Uh, I don't, I don't go shiny hunting. I'm doing a Nuzlocke that I've started since like nine months ago, and I'm on tenth attempt, and I haven't finished the game yet. I'm halfway through. <laughs> Oh, I see, Sarah, I see. And then Namu is instantly disappointed in me. I'm so sorry, Namu. I'm so sorry. Yo, I hate it when people sleep in my streams. You're not allowed to sleep. Stay up, stay for me, keep on donating, give me $10 per minute. Get me rich. No sleeping on my stream. If you're not sleeping, you better be working for me. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, stop sleeping! <laughs> I played on an emulator? I've always played on an emulator, OG. What do you mean, ban me? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna continue reading. Heck you guys. <laughs> the two of us sat beside each other against the library wall beneath a window and talked about things only transfer students could understand. I nodded many times as I listened to his stories, and he did the same as I awkwardly stumbled through mine. That's so true. Thoughts that we had wanted to give vo voice to streamed out of our mouths in turn. When a story do that, he was sure to understand everything I had to say. 
which is why I found myself naturally bringing up all sorts of topics. For the first time in my life, I knew how nice it felt to have someone nod and say, I know how you feel. Mofu being stinky, I know how you feel. Uh, with surprising ease, I told him all the things I had never been brave enough to say. The light outside gradually sank lower and grew redder, and settled on the bookcase before us as it to further bleach the sun-kissed books. By the time we reluctantly waved goodbye at a fork on our ways home, it was dark out, and I had become really, really close friends. The writing of this is beautiful, what the heck? The writing of this is so cute. I don't want to say I would send you some Pokemon. Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're doing Nuzlocke OG, so I, I can't... That, that's cheating. <laughs> I, or that's cheating in my... In in my in the rules I made myself. <laughs> it would be too mean. Or too mean, what the heck? Too, uh, too cheap. I'm gonna smack your door. door. <laughs> oh, holy heck. Yeah, if y'all weren't here at the very start of stream, right when I started stream, or once I... After the five minutes, once I went into, uh... Once I was going to start stream, I hit my knee against the table and cried in pain. <laughs> that was the start of stream today. Right, what the heck? You stopped that so cool. Oh, you're, you're a big whack. The more we talked, the more we realized we were surprisingly alike. I, I, I'm just glad not many people saw that. I think only Mofu. I think only Mofu was there for that. Thankfully, it's not like a lot of people saw that. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> I guess being a transfer student had given us similar traits. We both like to read books. More specifically, we liked reading much more than throwing a ball around. Nerds. I do do though. Hang off the jungle gym, playing a game that someone just thought up, or pretending to be interested in boring conversations. What the heck? Dude, we're not like the other kids who like to pretend to be interested in boring conversations. There's no way our, our kids are like that. I guess they, it's very obvious that they don't care <laughs> rather than pretending. Men in Black Flash, I see. Captain Betray. Yeah, yeah, they, it's, it's very funny. Like, like I, I didn't even, I mean, I did not even know how to be edgy until like middle school. <laughs> we both knew our wonder, how wonderful it felt to slowly nurture and expand the world in our hearts. In certain situations, it's better to spend time by yourself. It was the first person who had agreed with me on that. As cute this is, I'm just seeing like true like edgy or super mature students for their age. Actually, no, just edgy students getting along together. Just two edgy fourth graders. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm Mofu, your band. I am. F I'm looking for a new mod right now. If anyone wants to be a new mod for me, feel free to uh, just DM me and, you know, I'll, I'll respond. God dang it, so cool. <laughs> we're here, right? Me and I were both pretty frail. We both had to stay home from school or sit out during gym class numerous times. This had probably fostered our tendency to ponder things in silence. When the tendency manifested as a disconnect from others, both of our parents had taken us to see psychiatric counselors. What? We also both eventually stopped seeing these doctors after we moved. Okay. I'm sorry, this... <laughs> these kids are insane. They're so big-brained. <laughs> they're so big-brained that their the parents were like, man, they're not like kids. And took them to see counselors. Holy heck. Are these, are these are fourth graders, by the way, uh, Kaiser. I believe. Is, is, was it fourth grader or sixth grader? I think it's fourth grader. Or, yeah. I want the privilege of modding without having to be a mod. Hey, that's me in like every chat. Oh, he still laughs at boo jokes? You know what? True. Me in fourth grade. <laughs> Same. That's multiple best wholesome game you can't ban. 
that's not true. <laughs> I'm Bob Wolf. Thank you, Synchro. I love I'll be your mod, and I'm Bob Wolf with Galliver Kaiser. That's what I'm saying, Sarah. Okay, let me double check if it was actually fourth grade. It might be sixth grade. They are fourth graders. They were third. They were in third grade, and then the following spring, they're going to be moving. So they're fourth graders. They're out of fourth or third graders. They are. What the heck? Big edge. But you know what? Whatever. <laughs> I wish I, I wish I was that edgy. I wish I was edgy, Sag. Okay, I mean, actually, to be fair, you're right. I don't know what what fourth graders are like now. They have like Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, or whatever. I don't know what they can learn from like all that consuming all that social media information or whatever. I think they can develop. They they have way different, you know, demeanors than I guess each of us were during that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not, I guess I'm not, like, explaining this, but, like, right now, I guess. Current, current day. And once I had in my school, and I only remember one. I don't remember any of my school. That scene walking to Reese's Playground. God damn, so fun. <laughs> You're not so fun, no. That could have been your one. That could, that could have been your lifelong partner. Honestly, if that happened in elementary school for me, everyone would say cooties, and then we would all run. <laughs> I never got, I never understood that cooties thing. Just that we all believed it was real as kids. <laughs> Self proclaimed mathematician? <laughs> Whatever, Sofu. You were just jealous because of how smart he was. So that child was me. No, I'm kidding. I'll never forgive you. Okay, uh... Where were we? Oh, we even excelled at the same subjects. Language studies, history, and science. We did especially well on our language studies then. Though we didn't like that class at all. We both despised the way our teachers guide us through questions that had very specific answers. There's no... There's no way they knew that, and they they, they were able to formulate this thought in in the in in fourth grade. That's insane. Takaki and I also had our differences, of course. He had a far more casual approach to fitting in at school. He would joke, fool around, and abruptly stand up to other kids to secure a foothold in their society. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm cringing. <laughs> The fact that there's so rare on cheese brain, I see. <laughs> wait, wait, let me read this again, seriously. He would joke, fool around, and abruptly stand up to other kids to secure a foothold in their society. He tried to hide that he didn't fit in, even as he protected what he truly valued. These guys are ins- these kids are insane. Alright, so hopefully that was obviously a joke. I think I was the only one who noticed that about him. I found his method both shocking and refreshing. I thought I might be better off if I acted like that too. As a type who always cowered and silently backed away, every, every time I faced something, I was surprised by the efforts to be social and it made him more dependable. We started having long phone conversations without telling our parents. There's no way they wouldn't know. When, they, when that wasn't enough for us anymore, we started spending every moment, even at school together. It felt completely natural. I never knew how desperately I needed someone who understands me, 
through Takaki, I was able to integrate into a new elementary school. I had adapted to my new environment and, ha and, been, and been accepted. It was an incredibly rare and precious experience for me. I felt free, as if a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Those were the first days of my life that I wasn't afraid. I wanted to talk to you ever since you transferred here. When Ta Takaki admitted this to me, I felt fulfilled. Most girls in elementary school hope to find, hope to someday find their true love. Or to use an old expression, they believe in the red thread of fate. I still believe that. Oh, I, <laughs> I believe this. Uh, do girls actually think about, or not girls, do kids in elementary school think about love? We joke about it, but I don't think we actually think about true love. Yeah, yeah, Sarah. I mean, it's hard. And it's easy to it's easy to say to try to sleep, but it's really hard to actually sleep, huh, Sarah? I, I just wish you the best, Sarah. You do you. I'll be here. I wish you the best, Sarah. Bye. Or Oregon stay here. <laughs> Until then, I had never wished to find my true love or anything like that. I never thought that anyone would ever love me. And just to test again, is the is the music okay by the way? Is it is it too quiet or too loud? Thanks to Takaki, I think I felt normal emotions for the first time in my life. In other words, it was because the boy I always liked had always cared for me. It was all thanks to that miracle. Hey Kuro, hello, hello. Oh hey no man. Oh this is like the fifth stream I've had with my hands. Oh gee, oh I wonder if that's the case. I just do show off, right? I didn't have anyone to show off in middle school, high school. I didn't have friends. <laughs> you good? I see. Love, yes, and true love, no. Yes, yeah, so hard won't keep them. Yeah, good luck, Sarah. I wish you the best. Dang, Kuro just roasting Livia's internet. <laughs> Rest in peace. Oh, hey, Livia. That's a such a cute emote. Hiya, hiya. We're just reading. <clears throat> Until then, I had never wished to find my true love or anything like that. I never thought that anyone would ever love me. Dang, son. <laughs> that was my understanding of life and the world. Thanks to Takaki, I think I felt normal emotions for the first time in my life. In other words, it was because the boy- Oh wait, we already read this. Takaki and I spent most of our time together in the library. After school, we would stand next to each other and gaze at the shelves. Then we would carefully choose a book, sit across from each other at a big table, and read to our hearts content. Sometimes, one, one of us would hear the other giggle and react by peering into the book and pointing at an illustration. We we're always taking out some sort of book. But this is much more reliable. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I too, yeah. The the crush I had, we, we, I wouldn't say we lived that close to each other, but we, we walked the same way home because we were kids. We went to the library and waited our parents to pick us up. So we would go to the library together and sit at the same table and do our homework or read. or read. And this reminds of that too. Like imagine purposefully laughing at, at like a book to to get the other person to look at you, to, to get your crush to look at you, and then you explain it to them uh, what, what it's about. Yeah, okay, that was when I was like in like eighth grade. <laughs> I, Peter 101, has been timed out. That's a bot, isn't it? There's someone being here, Lofi, and praise Lofi. Wait, why is praise- wait, what? Okay. Thanks for the first sentence, by the way, Nomad. Appreciate ya. Thanks for the sub. <laughs> you're- you're too nice. But why praise Mo- why praise Mopo? Sorry, Nomad, you're getting banned. <laughs> Unlucky. <clears throat> At that library, I read stacks and stacks of books. That was where I read the entire Narnia series, from Prince Caspian on. Takaki recommend I read A Wizard of Earth Sea. Takaki preferred God. <laughs> preferred God. <laughs> Whoops. Preferred Ged when he acted serious in the second half. 
but I also liked when he was unbearably arrogant in the first. Momo, the little prince, never ending story. It was tough lugging that book all the way home. Takaki liked Arse Arsene Lupin, and I like Sherlock Holmes. Yo, I cannot imagine reading Sherlock Holmes in fourth grade, what the heck? I tried reading it in like 10, 11th grade and I'm still, hey, what is this? Praise Mofu, tree Mofu Wong, praise her, her well. <laughs> Mofu usually treat me better or else Mofu's gonna lose me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> These kids got more game than some guys, right OG? These are the smartest fourth graders. What the? What in the world? Uh, Garden in the Sky by Judith Worthy, The Flying Classroom. The King series by Teruo Teramura, Teramura, Shinichi Hoshi's Books for Kids. I made Takaki read Anne and Green Gables. So I had to read The Fiend with 20 Faces in return. That was pretty scary. I don't know. I don't know half of these books, by the way. Like, The Little Prince is the only book I... Momo and The Little Prince are like the only two books that's like, hey, these are for kids. Wait, I never even... I think Story is a kid's book too, right? I only watched the movie. Like, all of all these books, isn't like The Little Prince is like the only one probably like fitting for like a fourth grader? <laughs> Praise Momo for gives us toes. I use up my toe jokes wholesome book. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way to praise Mofu, but I can't. <laughs> I can't. I don't know how to praise Mofu. Yo, Mofu. The noises you make on your stream, the singing. Perfect. You're cute, Mofu. There we go. Give us viewers your love. So fool. You're funny. You're really weird. I'm trying to get my toes and all, but you're you're very amusing. Kuro, you're a very cool person. Appreciate ya. Uh OG, I always hear you chill. You're, honestly, OG, you're just the most normal person here. You're, you're just normal. Appreciate you. Uh, Nomad, yeah. The same thing. <laughs> I don't know what else to say to Nomad. I mean, you're also really normal too. <laughs> Yeah, Goji, bye. Yeah, usually my streams are pretty peaceful. <laughs> no one's saying thing. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. No one, you're just mad normal. Which is a very good thing, by the way. Oh, Olivia? <laughs> this is what puts the emotes. This is learning English. Oh, at the one time, Leo said, hey, I, it helps me. It helps that I learn English when I'm like lurking in your streams. Is what Olivia said. And I was like, oh, that's so nice of you to say. But also, I'm like, oh, shoot, that's so bad. <laughs> You're Lori English in my chat. That's downright horrendous. I'm so sorry, Olivia. <laughs> my medicine? Okay, mobile you're cringe, I lied. Yeah, no, I'm not sus. True, OG, you're not. Okay, actually, you, you can be sus, though. <laughs> so if I just said you're funny. I mean, no matter, there was that time where we explained. <clears throat> Where he went super in depth talking about uh, tobacco, <laughs> which sounds really funny out of context, but you're very educational about it and talked about your experiences with it, and that was very nice of you. Oh, that was very, very cool of you to educate everyone. All right, compliment everyone. That's here at least, I think. And Sarah, you're still there. You're, you're still very new to this stream or chat, so I can't say much about you. But, yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> Alright, Sofu, Mofu, pick one, pick, pick one of you two. Because one of you guys are getting banned. I do not allow PDA in my chat. I know where else Simpson you are. I'm learning, I'm learning how to use the word print. I don't get banned. Alright, Sofu, any last words? Uh, actually, I should just use this time to, uh, wait, where's my bookmark? I'm gonna use this time.
Time to stand up. Oh lord. I'm tired. Or my butt's tired. Hey, don't ban me. I probably was saying that too. Saying that too, to be honest. I see. Ban one of them. Oh, you're, 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 you're telling that to mine, I believe. And technically to me too. And you know what Yonder is can do? <laughs> I'm butt where I'm not showing you my butt on stream. Uh, stretch, stretch. Ooh. What time is it? It's two oh one. I'll probably stop in thirty minutes. I'll read a bit more. Oh wait, what? What page are you in at? Twenty seven. Oh shoot. Oh no. We're on page- oh no. We're only on page 27. I talk too much this stream. Hopefully you're getting smacked. Wait, actually no. Wait, I don't want my butt to be... Protruding out like a- like a bakery. <laughs> I'm fine with it being flat. Oh, is that so cool? That's unfortunate. Squirrel World stream? Oi. Oh, I'm so sorry, Kuro. Shoot, it's so bad. At this pace? We're gonna finish this in 8 streams. <laughs> oh no! But yeah, I'm not gonna... The next time I'm gonna read this book is gonna be next week, same time. Is what I plan. Let's go do... Make it a weekly thing, just to read. Rather than like, speedrun it in like, one weekend. Get low fit. No, I don't need one. I'm happy with being flat. Don't make that a hashtag. Oi. I'm smacking all of you. Ah. <sighs> sure. I sure. think Fade is still streaming. Okay, let's go. <laughs> huh. I'm just stretching. Yo, shut. Yo, shut. Man, I think the two Apex? Man, why can't you be like Fade Muscle? Get better at Apex, no, I'm kidding. Well, why can't you have the same motivation as them? Wait, Fade is playing ranked with Synchro and Eggy? He's getting hard carried by them. Eggy and Synchro are, are like veterans at Apex. What the heck? Hydrate, please? Sure. And milk. I'll hydrate with milk. There we go. Oh, it's a Kai's Oh no, I, I'll, I'll be reading 30 more minutes. <laughs> Unless you're going, Kuro, or you're just saying that even though I haven't ended yet. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Alright. Tomorrow, what's happening tomorrow then? Tomorrow is a short stream. I'm playing either Tekken or uh, Genshin or just chatting or art. I don't know. There could be a lot of things I'm doing tomorrow. The after tomorrow though is definitely Pokemon, at least Pokemon, maybe Genshin too, but most definitely Pokemon. And after that we're going back to Mount Mr. Rainers. <laughs> Solid Services, which is a kind of spooky visual novel. And then after that is another short stream. I don't know what we're doing after that. And after that one, next Tuesday is going to be a special stream. I'll be doing a collab with a certain someone. I'm not going to tell you guys who, but some of you know him. Oh, I guess it's not really a collab, though. Guobon or Kawaii Legs, I can't decide. Oi. Or ASMR? Oi. I know, I see, I see. Hey, no, charge your phone, good old. Hey, collab with Lofi again. <laughs> I'm calling Eggy. It's not Eggy. 
I haven't collab. I haven't done a collab with this person on stream before. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> who the heck do you know who Trash Man is? So <laughs> you haven't even met the. I haven't, you haven't even met the man. Was it because I just brought him up on, on stream sometimes? What the heck? I know Wolfu knows Trash Man, but you know him too. Do I bring Do I bring him up a lot on stream? As in, you know, because I mentioned him on stream. Yo, yo, it's, it's, it's not, it's not Trashman, I swear. <laughs> it's not Trashman. Oh no, I have so many bullets right now. <laughs> yeah, we've been friends for- get out of here, Sofu. It's not gonna be a takes two though. Not yet. That's spring break. Not saying I'm playing- I'm not playing with Trash- I'm not playing with Trashman next week. I swear, okay, I swear. Y'all know nothing. I lie, you don't know this guy. <laughs> uh, so cool. You're getting banned no matter what. <laughs> you can't save yourself anymore. How dare you? How dare you? I don't know what, I don't know what we're going to do that stream. We're either going to play Human Fall Flat or Biped. I think we're going to play Biped. We might even do Overcooked. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we're going to do that stream. Dang it, no man. I do, I do love those clips though of, of uh, Andrew Garfield uh, denying that he's in the Superman movie. <laughs> All right, let's get back to reading. Yeah, we played iPad a bit, but we never really shoot. By we, I mean me and this dude that y'all don't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know this guy. Uh, we played it a bit, but we haven't finished it. We're, we're, we're gonna restart it. But y'all, but, but you don't know this guy. He, he, he goes to a different school. <laughs> y'all for nothing. All right, where, what's a good stopping point? Sorry guys, I'm going ahead. You just read 10 more pages? Let's read, let's read page 40. So will you stop that? It's just me, it's just my my original or my current avatar, our VTuber avatar, and, and then the pix my previous pixel avatar on stream. It's just the it's just the two of them. I'm just collabing with myself. Yeah, exactly, so cool. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Okay. Let's do this. Nearly a year of these perfect days has had passed. It was evening and I was walking home alone from school. We couldn't make We couldn't stay glued together 24-7, so I sometimes walked home by myself when we weren't able to meet. Uh I think it was around the middle of May when I was in fifth grade. Oh so now they're in fifth grade. It was a lovely day when the tender warmth of the sun uh could almost soothe you to sleep. Tempted by the pleasant weather, I felt that urge to take a detour. Since school was right near the boundary between uh, Setakaya and Shibuya, I would always pass the Yoyogi Hachimangu Shrine on the way home. The shrine sat at the top of a small hill, which was so packed with, with trees that it looked like a neat arrangement of parsley. There's no way. Honestly, if, if your PNG is a thirst trap, a, a very... Thirst provoking, that's not even the word, trap. I, I would definitely be down. I'll would, I would be hard simping. Uh, I usually just saw it in the corner of my eye as I went by. But that day, I suddenly decided to climb the long staircase to the shrine. I wanted to see what was at the top of the hill. And then we would collab together, Sofu, and Mofu is not allowed to join. We'll just make Mofu jealous. Rows of tall trees created a tunnel of leaves and branches over the staircase. The higher I climbed, the more the trees dimmed the light overhead. I arrived at the top of the staircase and went through the torii. Torii. 
There was a gentle curve in the smooth gravel pa path to the shrine. Red lanterns dotted both sides of the path. A sacred tree covered the road with its foliage, as if it were in, as if it were its root. Sunshine poured down between the branches, creating patches of light on the ground. It was there I saw Takagi. I had ran into him, completing my chance. He sat on a large rock on the side of the path and was gazing into the distance, slightly bent forward. He almost looked like he was sleeping. He was as still and quiet as if he had turned into one of the rocks or the trees. Let's go, Sofu. There were two cats right. There were two cats next to him, one on each side. They were stretching, lying down, sitting up, twitching their tails, looking away from him all the while. They nonchalantly attached one portion or another of their bodies to him. Takaki and the two cats were simply there, each facing a different direction. Despite facing their own directions, they somehow seemed so seemed to be communicating through telepathy, all touching and connected. Specks of sunlight sunlight rained down through the leaves above their heads. The gentle wind occasionally brushed them as it passed. I marveled at the scene before me. It was as if I, too, had turned to stone. It felt like God was trying to reveal me to me an important truth, as if a fragment of the universe's secret had been laid out in the picture I beheld. There's also an E.B. River in France. I jumped, startled by the voice. Before I knew it, Takaki had noticed me and turned his head in my direction. The E.B. River? I asked. You know the E.B. River here? In Japan? Hmm, the one in Gifu Prefecture? I said. With a lingering sense of surprise. The guy had actually lived near Gifu, in the Chubu region. Yeah, I was looking at it in the atlas in the library today and found another E.B. river in France. Pretty neat, huh? Maybe there's another Tama river somewhere in the world. Does that mean the world's all connected, I ask? Offhandedly. So by question, the cocky gazed fixedly at me. You know, I never thought about that before. He looked around at the leaves that obscured the path, the concrete toward the, and the paved path to the shrine. <laughs> God damn it, Sofu. What was the kind of save a bad RNG, Mofu? I think it must be, he murmured, sounding convinced. With an admiring look, Takaki stared straight at me. He still seemed to be digesting the vague question I had asked. I was growing more embarrassed by the second. Takaki had a habit of staring. All I had done was blurt out a question that had popped into my head. I didn't know how to react to him mulling over it or taking it to heart. No one had taken my words so seriously, and I was at a loss. I always took what people said too seriously, and had never been the other way around. Takaki averted his eyes. He brought his hands close to the cats, almost touching them. Mimi is the white one, and Chobi has the brown, brown spots, he said. Are you siblings? Mm, I'm not sure, but they're always together. I crouched down near Mimi and reached for the back of her neck. Mimi's fur was as fluffy as down. It was enchantingly soft. The friendly white cat rubbed her forehead against my hand. After two or three more rubs, she abruptly stood up and sprinted across the path. Chobi ran lazily and followed after her. A strange feeling still lingered inside me. I arrived home, jumped into bed, and brought the blankets over my side, over my head. I thought about the E.B. River of a faraway land. I wonder what it's like. I bet it's a lovely river on the smaller side. But I don't think it's a, it's a shallow stream. It bet. I bet it's narrow, but deep. The flowing river is dark and kind. The choppy surface will shimmer in the light of the summer sun. That was how I pictured a river I had never seen in a country I had never been. Hey, Kaiser. Give me these hands, oi. Man, you want my hands and freaking so full with my toes? Leave my limbs alone. Leave my body parts alone. Then, leaving out of bed, I headed to my desk and took out a notebook from the drawer. It was just an ordinary school notebook, but also one of my most treasured possessions. I have a strange habit. I enjoyed writing bits of trivia, and I acquired I that I acquired from books and TV programs. I crammed loads of facts into my notebook, for example. How moles need to eat their way every day in order to live. How half of the 7,000 existing languages would disappear in 100 years' times. And how the Pont Neuf, which translates to the new bridge, is actually the oldest existing one in Paris. 
I want a hand boy Pokemon. Oi. You stop that. I just about finished filling my third notebook. Only much later did I realize that I was trying to protect myself in, in, in this way. Gathering knowledge was how I drew nearer to the secrets of the universe. I surrounded myself with information to try to comprehend the way of the world. It was my childhood ritual, an attempt to somehow figure out the answers to the eternal secrets of the universe. I started a sentence on a new London notebook. There is an Ebi River in both Japan and France. Then after some hesitation, I added another sentence in tiny letters. That's how the world is all connected. Yo. Okay, first of all, this narration monologue makes me think of the care think of the female lead so differently, and the main female lead too. Because there's none of this in the movie. This seems like a completely different. This seems like a completely different thing. <laughs> Make me stop that! Oh my gosh! Bang bang! There, I shot you. You're dead. <laughs> Uh, right. I should show Takaki my notebook at school tomorrow. He's going to be so stunned and impressed. I bet he's going to keep all sorts of facts in his head. Or maybe he even keeps a notebook like me. At the same time I had that thought, I felt so overwhelmingly embarrassed and awkward. And in the end, I never showed him my notebook. 12. I want to write about one more thing that happened in 5th grade. If I could say that no noise interfered with the time and space I share with Takaki, and that peaceful days continue forevermore, it would be an absolute fairy tale, but that of course was not the case. We were on the verge of purity, and our classmates were at an age where they began to notice our relationship. Takaki and I were really close, the two of us were always together. I guess that really roused our classmates, they just wouldn't stop teasing us. It was during a long break, so it must have been lunchtime. A group of boys came up to me and jabbed me in the shoulder. The ritual teasing began. When to the wedding, and more direct questions. While well, I can laugh about it now, it felt like absolute death at the time. Bang bang. <laughs> that was cute. What the heck? <laughs> Dives and Prokaiser dies. dies. <laughs> the world took so long. Oh my gosh. Whatever. Y'all just have your dramatic act there. I mean, Doggy okay, Kaiser. Bang bang again. <laughs> there. You know, go with Sofu. I tried talking back to them, but instead choked on my words and made a strange cultural noise. All of my classmates burst into laughter. I felt goosebumps forming on my upper arms and my blood ran cold. The cocky wasn't there. They had carefully planned to attack when they knew I would be alone. Their spite scared me beyond belief. When Takaki wasn't with me, I would return to my old helpless self. The nasty boys were getting a kick out of my inability to respond and the problem only escalated. They went to the front of the room, stood before the blackboard, and excitedly started dueling. They teased me and Takaki with the classic Ai Ai Gasa. They decorated. Wait, Hi Hi Gasa? Oh, is this a love umbrella? The great Lofi powers bears lots of bread eating. What the heck? Are you kids in fourth grade? No, they're in fifth grade now, so full. Yeah, sure. Yo, wait, wait. I think this is. Uh, the journal of a shared umbrella with all colors of Yo, this is like the most popular scene in the movie. Yo, let's go. I love this part. I swear they're gonna make a cringe though. Red hearts, red heart marks proliferated, and Takagi's family name was appended to my first name. Speechless, speechless and frozen horror, I listened to my heart pound louder and louder in my head. The growing pressure in my head. Wait, I just realized I saw the VTuber tagging my stream, right? Oh, I'm hard. I'm I'm hard debating right now. Whoops, my bad. <laughs> I'm not a VTuber right now. Whoopsies. Aha, stinky. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, the pressure in my head was excruciating. Why does your body always shut down at such times? After they finished their drawing and had a good long laugh about it, I finally managed to coax my trembling legs towards the blackboard. Next, I should reach out, grab the eraser, and drag it right across the board. I understood that it was in the back of my mind. But that was the one thing I couldn't do. The moment I came face to face with the drawing, their will to humiliate me bore down on me, and I started to fold. A dense, murky cloud of malice leaking out from the blackboard seemed to wrap around and cling to me. Uh-oh, wait a minute. 
I'm smacking him with Hawaii. I almost said that. The moment I came face to face with- okay. Hey, Dents? Okay, wait. Spite? Mallets. It was even hard to breathe. The boys and the laughter were nothing compared to the terrifying malice emanating from the blackboard. I knew the devil. I knew that the devil didn't just exist in the stories I read, but also in the real world. Oh my gosh. Their will, leaking from the chalk, drawing like glass, like gas, was it? What I most feared. What bound me with an invisible thread, the blackboard went out of focus. My face was on fire and my toes felt like ice. My heart was shattering into tiny fragments. I hung my head low, lower and lower. I would be crying in a few seconds. Oh, you are down bad. Just then, the sound of brisk footsteps beating against the vinyl floor cleared the fog that clung to me. My classmates went into a teasing frenzy. I was able to turn and face the footsteps with a ferocious expression on his face. The cocky came stomping towards me. For a split second, I was even scared of him. When he rushed near me, I couldn't help but hunch my shoulders. The cocky jerked his back straight up, went directly for the eraser, and forcefully shoved it across the blackboard a couple times. The picture, erased diagonally from the center, now made no sense. It was re I was released from my shackles. I let out a quiet sigh of relief. The next moment, something grabbed me. I was shocked to see Takaki's hand holding my right wrist. Letting go of for a moment, he quickly grasped my hand instead. Then I felt myself being taken away. My body suddenly weightless. Oh, hey, Joe. Hello, hello. Oh my gosh, why did he come with that emote? I believe you were, was it today or yesterday? You were doing a D and D. Hey, that was fun. Takaki had grabbed me and led me out of the classroom, or rather, we had rushed out of there together, holding hands. How can I explain how I felt at the time? It was like I was floating. I don't know how to put it. That's the only way I can describe the liberating feeling that took over me. It was only at first that I hadn't tugged. Before long, my body became weightless and began to move on its own. Holding hands, we soared through the hallway. The cheers and whistles behind us just became a gentle tailwind pushing us forward. All I felt was a sense of freedom and the firmness of his hands. The power flowing from into me made me even lighter. The intense afternoon sunlight spilling in through the windows and onto the hallway reflecting against the polished... Wait, I just realized I'm covering the pecs like this. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so lazy right now. Yeah, power oh, that's gold, Joe. Right, Nomad? That power is flowing to me and made me even lighter. The intense afternoon sunlight spilling in through the windows and onto the hallway reflected against the polished wax floor and was almost blinding. If it was in third person, I think it would be better. <laughs> because it's in first person, it sounds so... surreal. We rushed towards the sunlit schoolyard as if to dive into the... into the light. It was at that moment, I realized... Once and for all, I was in love with Takaki. Uh, after this, after I finish reading for today, I, I, I'll probably show on stream the, uh, uh, this particular scene on stream. Uh, we ran to the back of the story shed in the corner of the schoolyard. Behind the shed was a lawn with several big rock samples for science class. Yeah, I think I missed this one. That was the first I had ever held his hand. I didn't want to let go. I wanted to stay connected like that forever. We ran to the back of the storage shed in the corner of the school. Are you really in love? So fool, did you say you didn't want to be a uh, relationship hater? Or just a few minutes ago or an hour ago? We ran to the back of the storage shed in the corner of the school yard. Behind the shed was a lawn with several big rock samples for science class. We're in the school's blind spot where no one could find us just by glancing around. We lay on the lawn and skipped fifth period. It became an issue some soon enough, and our teacher gave us an earful. But I remained surprisingly calm. Takaki and I talked about all sorts of things on the grass. When there was a break in the conversation, we spent the time staring at the blue sky and at wisps of clouds that, they looked hard enough, were moving very slowly. The entire time we laid there, I yearned to touch his hand again. And well, I think that was the first time I ever wanted to kiss Takaki. Man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tugged, actually tugged on the uh, cord of the microphone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, Jeff. Hello. Where's Jane? I mean, you won't be. Yeah, whatever. All right, you and Sho. 
Oh right, I was supposed to do that. I was gonna do that when Mo, not Mofu, when Fade and Ko if, if Fade and Koba shows up, but they're not. I mean, I'll, I guess I'll show that tour at the end if. Uh... Yeah, I can show that at the end. If either you you're still here, Mofu, or Fade or Koba are here. God damn, it, Jeff. <laughs> No, no, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. I accidentally tripped to the microphone. I'll, sh I'll show you, I'll show it to you real quick. It's basically like D&D, but super simplified. Like one session is like 50 or 30 minutes. I don't know, depending how fast you play. It's like a choose your adventure book, but uh... <laughs> With some RP with some minor RPG elements. Uh, is it this part? We were in sixth grade and spring had finally come. The air was now gentle and warm, and I no longer needed to wear my overcoat. With comments like, all the kids in Tokyo are as spiffy as they would say. My mom would come home with a mound of clothes she had brought, bought me for the spring. Even though we were going on on our third year in Tokyo, she talked as if we just arrived yesterday. Yo, I need to finish my milk. Don't don't tell my mom that's been two hours. I haven't finished my milk. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. My mother is very girly, so she only bought me clothes that were frilly and cute. I was like a little doll. Feeling confident enough to wear clothes that stood out at school was quite new for me, and I got them used to attracting attention. I could lift my chin and take big, sure steps when I walked. I could laugh without caring what the other kids thought of me. Takaki and I were spending more and more time together. I was always by his side, for, or he always by mine. We were inseparable at school, and during lunch and after the final bell, we would sneak into the library storage area and read books and talk about them. When we felt like we hadn't had enough time, we chatted, Endlessly on the phone hoping our parents didn't notice. Even the kids at school got tired of teasing us. I would sometimes grab Takaki's hand, like, had me forgetting to. <laughs> this is so cheesy, what the heck? I would sometimes grab his hand, like I had been, like I had been forgetting to. What the heck? This is, this is so cheesy. And very cute. <laughs> yes, we are corny. Every time a tender glow enveloped me. I had been so sure that I would die unloved, and I could hardly believe that a hand that didn't brush mine as thought existed. He understood me totally. He heard me out whenever, whatever I said. Yo, I had been so sure that I would die unloved. This is the thoughts of a fourth grader, by the way. Uh, they're in fifth grade now, but th this is what, what she thought in fourth grade. And she didn't have a... I guess the tough upbringing of her life was just that, was just the fact that she transferred school constantly. But yeah. <laughs> They're just giga chads. They're just built different. I like the Lofu Kong emo of Lofu. Wait, don't like it, Jeff. Boy. <laughs> it's Lofu very well. I'm smacking Jeff. I'm smacking you. And I'm smacking Lofu too. I'm dying without. <laughs> God dang it, no man. Hey, Olivia. We went on dates at various places on the way home. If I remember correctly, the cherry blossoms had budded around March 24th, then fully bloomed in less than a week. Every time I pass uh, Sangabushi Park on the way to and from school, the intense presence of the pink cherry blossoms seemed to grow stronger. Happy to watch the seasons change, I often caught myself looking up at the trees. Whenever the wind blew, the soft petals of newly budded flowers gently fluttered to the ground. It was a blissful sight to behold. Sangabushi Park, located on a small hill in the middle of the residential area, was like a playground enclosed by trees, a narrow road only wide enough for K, for K cars and bicycles. Winded around the park on its gentle descent towards an Odaku line station, the cherry trees and extending their branches over the road, creating flowered caves, eaves that hung in the sky. Although the park wasn't part of the school-approved route. I practically dragged the cocky through it so that we could walk under the cherry blossoms. The blue sky peeked out between the clouds after the rain. The sunlight had started drying the dampness from the road. Takaki and I walked side by side beneath the cherry trees. Branches reflected in the petals. 
Fawn petals cast ripples in the water. Maybe it was because of the rainfall that ended at noon, but countless petals were strewn across, strewn across the lawn like confetti. Through the cherry petals shone a pink light onto a roadside water tower. Even the air smelled pink. Even the air smelled pink. The branches spotted the road that we walked with their shadows. Hey, they say it's five centimeters per second, I remarked abruptly. Hmm? What is? That bitter look on Takagi's face gave me butterflies in my chest. A cherry petal falls at that speed. They say it's five centimeters per second. Huh, you know a lot, Akadi. Takaki replied distractedly. Oh, wait, these? This is the exact same lines in the trailer of the movie, by the way. I don't know. Imagine finding love. Namu, no, I'm sorry. The Mao. <laughs> Unkick the cafe. What the? You know, you're still getting bullied class <laughs> The fifth graders really think about love instead of graduating. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think fifth graders really, really think about graduating either, though. I'm smacking you, Jeff. Sorry. I'm pretty sure it just means it smells like love in the air. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> the freak really has God dang, it's so cool. Olivia, I'm sorry. It's down bad in here. As always, though. Didn't Takaki know? Didn't you know how mysterious it was that right rigid numerals could express natural movements that shook your heart? <clears throat> it was so precise it sounded like fate. Five centimeters per second. I think there were subtle words of love that my unconscious, unconscious had pronounced. They me that meant that I felt so natural when we were together. That I always wanted to be with him. I hoped we could very gradually get closer over time. At the speed of a falling cherry petal, slowly but surely, I wished that we would naturally become one. On that day, I think my existence was the most blessed of all, enveloped in the most beautiful thing in the world. Of course, I didn't know that I uttered the phrase five centimeters per second at the young age of 11, <laughs> but I had pulled all my wishes and feelings in those words, which is why Takaki delayed response was a bit of a letdown. What? She was disappointed on his delayed response? It sounds like you're texting like a friend or rom your romantic partner in like high school and it, or like not, not even high school, an adult like in any part of like a relationship and they don't and they take they take uh they take a while to respond and you get mad about it. I'm, I don't know what fifth graders think about that stuff. I kind of mean now. <laughs> what the heck? Me now, booty, 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 steady, steady, steady. No, no, no. Uh, I don't have an opinion about furries if you're. I mean, I think furries are. I mean, this goes for any group. They have this like stigma around them, the stereotype, but I think they're cool. <laughs> Text me back and no sense back to me. <clears throat> oh, true, no man. Or is buzzing buzzing? Okay, I did. Oh, I didn't say that. No fool. I just don't have an opinion on them. <laughs> uh, the petals rained down so fiercely that I felt like we were walking through a storm of flowers. The dramatic sight made me feel a bit giddy. I reached out and tried to catch a petal in my hand. It lightly trilled and slipped out from my palm as if trying to escape my body heat. Hey. Isn't it just like snow? You think so? Asked Tataki. You often reply with the question. When petals fall in Japan, it snows on the other side of the world. Hold up. Just checking my... This one part of my finger is kind of hurting for some reason. I just avoid uh, bending it. Or it's just like, it's like a cut. I don't, is, is it a paper cut? I swear to God. I better respect that. I mean, it's not just furry, just everything, any group in general. Or most groups. <laughs> like, they're just... Especially like, you know, something like furries, which is like an interest or a hobby. Uh, that's, it's just, there's just people having fun over there. <laughs> Alright, Shalom. Alright. Uh, Brazil is opposite of Japan, Taki went off top again. Actually, it was the ocean near Argentina. 
Of course the earth is flat, I said, and with that I slowly took off. <laughs> I ran down the hill and through a tunnel of cherry blossoms. The shadows of the branches and the sunlight that shone between them ran alternately over my eyes. Come around, so I always pretend I'm a lizard and slither and slither over the lizard. What? So if I see you doing that near me, I'm smacking, I'm kicking and smacking you <laughs> and telling you to get back up and act normal. Man, no man. I'm banning both of you. I live in Lopez Walk. Get out of my wall, Jeff. Hey, wait up. Takai's voice called out from behind me. He was chasing after me. I could tell by the sound of his footsteps. Regardless, I ran around the curb as I do hide myself in the shadow of the last cherry tree that lined the road. Okay, just two and a half more pages. And we're done. Your walls are nice. Get on my walls, Jeff. Me? Mofo, I'm smacking you. I like the smoke. Uh, do you now, Sofu? Did you get one of those ear mics and read to us like that? Well, why an ear mic? Or like the specifically like the sounds that you hear like in like, in like in an airplane? <laughs> Yo, I have an ear mic. It's like I'm those like K-pop stores dancing while I'm singing. They want to smack Mofu because Olivia, Mofu is bad. Is a bad influence. Mofu, don't cry as if you're innocent. Oh, sure, no, man. I'll look at it. I can put it in this Discord server. As I ran from Takaki, I felt at peace. I had someone to chase after- I had someone to chase after me? That feeling was such peace and bliss. I reached the bottom of the hill and turned the corner. There was a road crossing there. Railroad crossing there. The Adakyo line appeared to run through the very center of the residential area. The signal started to clang. I saw- I saw that the crossing gate was slowly beginning in- its descent. I crossed the tracks before the gate came down. Even though the cherry trees had cut off a while back, wind tossed petals come fluttering onto the tracks. Soon after I reached the other side, the gate was down. When I turned around, I could see Takaki standing in front of the crossing in a slightly wobbling black and yellow striped gate. Akari came back by anxiety in his voice. I opened the umbrella I held in my hand. What was wrong? It was just a close of the crossing gate. Takaki. I spun as the cherry blossoms fell onto my umbrella. See, it's just like snow. I hope we can see our cherry blossoms together again next year, I told him. Not only next year, but also the year after that and beyond. Before I could add that, a deafening train came hurling, hur hurtling between us. For a moment, I felt a bit uneasy. The train rushed by with a thunder, thunderous rumble. The guy was on our side, but I couldn't see or hear him. That was all I talked to, but negative thoughts in my head. Oh, Takagi isn't there anymore. This is for this is big foreshadowing. I hate it here. Because I watched the movie, but I didn't need to worry. After the train left and the ear splitting noise died down, he was still there on the other side of the tracks. The thick air of spring, the light of the afternoon sun, and the snow like petals were all around him. When the gates started rising, Takagi hurried towards me like he could hardly wait. <clears throat> Drawn by his rushed steps, my legs also moved forward to meet him in the middle of the tracks. Closing my umbrella and shaking off the petals, I felt comforted and happy to come close to him again. Simply being beside him was warmer than the spring sunlight. <clears throat> I'm gonna say, no oh, wait. Not Mofu, then you're just what? Love the Mofu actually acting the victim? Wait, hold on, you stop that. I'm sorry, I'm on my way. The reason why Iggy's better than Mofu? What? Post it. Okay. True soulful. Alright, what is it? Oh, my ear mic. I thought you meant like when, like it would like hang off your ear, like the K-pop, like singers. I mean, like singers and air and pilot are pilots. You meant three deal? You want me to do ASMR? <laughs> Uh, these ones cost a lot. <laughs> oh, you stopped that, Jeff. 
I can't read. Well, that's why I'm reading it out loud, Makoto. Hey, Makoto. I'm not doing ASMR. I mean, maybe I could. I mean, I don't know. Do people, do people come here for ASMR or would like to, would like ASMR on the stream? <laughs> I mean, I guess if I make it redeem, but dang, it costs a lot. <laughs> God, they so full your chip. You saw that. I don't know what that is, Makoto. You mean? What is that emo nomad? I. I'm, I can't believe you don't know that. Was that the name? I see. Uh, I don't know the names of them. Have they possibly gone on the boys? Wow, this costs a lot. <laughs> Uh, hey, Yutra. Alright, let me finish reading. Was the value reciprocating the feelings I had tried to express to him? Past the tracks as we continued on our way home, he suddenly asked me that question. Where do you want to go for junior high? Junior high? Yeah. I was confused. I hadn't really thought about it before. I just assumed that I would be attending the districts. Your family hasn't said anything about private schools? I asked Takagi. We haven't really talked about it. Takagi let a light hum and his usual dry voice proceeded to explain. His parents had offered to send him to a private junior high and high school in the area. What do you think, Akari? He quickly continued. Huh? I was thinking we'd go together. I was caught off guard by a sudden pr preposition. W well, I have to ask my mom. I took a moment to think about it. Not that many students attended private junior highs. The chances of attending the same private school and the classmates were pretty... Pretty... Slim. Oh, is that the name? I see. Oh, do you know? No, you saw that mofu. Don't already know. And then I just had a new rational fruit. Do you know? Chicken butt? Oi. I haven't really thought before either. So that's all. That's all. It looks so random. Oi. Um, uh, if I don't want one to phone, we'll come and take my rice cooker. <laughs> is Lopador true? We take rice cookers? Whatever. Hey, Jono. Hello. Hey, hand reveal. Is it even a hand reveal anymore? It's, it's like my fifth stream. Oh, you saw that so full. The Gaki was telling me he wanted to go to such a place. Somewhere new, just he and I. We went to a public school. We would probably end up with all the kids from our elementary school. It wouldn't be horrible. But, I, but the teasing would still get me. If Takaki and I went to a different junior high together, we wouldn't know a single person then. We would only know each other. The two of us would work together to build a new life from scratch. The ideas, the idea entranced me. At that moment, I had a shocking realization. Okay, wait. She just worked together to build a new life from scratch. Okay, this, this is really nice. Like, uh, not like romantically, but like, I mean, could be, but like, experiencing new things with like a friend or someone you enjoy being with, just experiencing new things together is really nice when it's like new to both of you. Like, and a bare bones example, like, on the release date of a game, the both of you play it together co-op on the day of the release and you're both experiencing everything new together and finding stuff, finding all the new stuff and just, you know, just doing it together. It's all new to you, to the both of you. And that's nice. I'm gonna try to challenge strategy by the way. I probably won't. I'm not a fan of those kind of games. Luffy chooses nails every day. I don't chew my nails. I used to do as a kid though. I remember I was getting chased by dogs with a friend for oh no. Yeah. Looks really cool though. And the ring one Luffy? Oh my gosh, nasty gifted me Elden Ring. <clears throat> I'll uh I'll probably stream it in the far future. I might be doing a co-op with Mofu here if Mofu wants to. I think we are. If not, that's fine too. I'll just solo. Or I'll just play alone too. I also want to watch Mofu play alone, so that Mofu can suffer. <laughs> yeah, it is amazing it took so hard, Jono. It's really nice. Octopath is so nice. Aesthetic's really nice, but... I'm not really a fan of that kind of gameplay. You're carrying me? No, you're carrying me, Mofu. Or, 
Okay, fine. You're right. I'm carrying you, but you're still gonna be in front as like a meat shield. Oh, fool. You're gonna take all the hits and take the aggro and dodge everything while I'm in the back charging as a mage using my spells. Oh, thanks, Mofu. <clears throat> and the moment I had a shocking realization. It wasn't just like transferring school. I actually wanted to transfer. I wasn't scared of changing schools anymore. It was all thanks to the warmth I felt next to me. That would be great, I answered. Then I drew just an inch closer to him. I was convinced that his warmth would forever be mine. I thought I was mature for my age, but I was still a child. We believed that we would go to the same junior high and be together to the end. In a year, I found that it was just wishful thinking, and I had been so sure I was aware that the world around me was unkind.